Hello everybody, welcome to the Comics Teacher. Today I'm going to be going over three reasons why you should be using comics and graphic novels in your classroom to teach about sensitive issues. So the first thing we should talk about is what definition we mean when we mean sensitive issues. So personally, when I'm talking about sensitive issues in comics and graphic novels, I'm talking about mental and physical health issues, drug and alcohol abuse, um, family issues, bullying, all of those things that people might find difficult subjects to talk about. Now. The next thing I want to tell you about this video is, well, I'm going to be going over three major reasons you should be using comics and graphic novels to help teach those items, those sensitive issues in your classroom. This is not a video that's going to give you a list of a bunch of different titles to use. I'll be mentioning titles, but we've done whole panels on just different titles that deal with sensitive issues. So if you are interested in that, I can do another video that just goes over like rapidly a bunch of uh, graphic novel and comics titles. But for this video, I'm going to go over the major reasons. Now, the first reason we should be using comics and graphic novels to teach to sensitive issues is because sometimes images can do things better than words can. You know, words are wonderful and I'm not going to talk about I'm not going to sit here and tell you that comics and graphic novels are greater than prose or prose is greater than graphic novels because each has their time and their place. And there's just some moments where seeing something on a page of a graphic novel, uh, an artist or a writer putting themselves in a position, in a page, in an image that's just as powerful as seeing it as a photograph. I'm taking a history of photography of class right now. And some of those photographs that I'm seeing in that book are just so amazing and capture a moment in time better than words could in, in, in certain ways. And I think graphic novels can do that as well. So we have these artists putting themselves on the pages of this book in ways that we can't do with prose. And it can be more meaningful when we see it rather than when we read it. The second main reason you should be using comics and graphic novels to teach sensitive issues in your class is because those books can reach a younger audience. There are a lot of books out there that reach younger audiences that deal with sensitive issues. And I know I'm not going to list a bunch of of titles, but off the top of my head, I just keep thinking like how successful Raina Telgemeier has been with her books. And one of the reasons her books are so popular is that they strike a chord with people, young, young and old, that dealt with you know, personal issues that, that she was going through. Guts, the recent one, is about her stomach issues. And anybody growing up as a child or as an adult who have dealt with any intestinal or stomach issues feels like they're on an island. So you find a book like that that is geared more towards young ones. Now you can breach subjects with them that you might have had a hard time with a prose book, a, a storybook that had too many words or is harder to relate to to a younger audience. So that is the second reason why you should be using comics and graphic novels to teach to sensitive issues to children. It's because so many amazing ones have been created and are being created by these artists that we can find books that build empathy. And I think building empathy in young people and our students in the younger generations is more important now than it ever has been. And Seeing yourself and someone else and, and somebody being vulnerable and creating a graphic novel about their lives really helps people become empathetic. And I think that goes hand in hand with the power of the image with younger people. The third reason why you should be using comics and graphic novels to teach to sensitive subjects in your classroom is because the list of titles just keeps getting bigger. Every year, amazing artists are seeing the success of the artists that came before them, and they are telling their stories through the comics medium. And what's happening is this market is just exploding with amazing stories dealing with personal loss and alcohol and, and, and drug abuse and bullying. And everybody that, all these artists that had, and, and a lot of them are fiction, but a lot of them are nonfiction. So we're actually getting put into the shoes of people that had these things happen to them. And every year that list just keeps growing. So you are going to be able to 
build an amazing classroom or library shelf of graphic novels that deal with with pain and loss and suffering and it's not all that because a lot of these books it's not just gloom and doom it's also hope and inspiration and looking for people's successes in the shadow of going through some some terrible things in life which is important for us to do and to build that empathy so once again the three reasons you need to be teaching with comics and graphic novels in your classroom in order to breach those sensitive issues is that images at times can portray moments in time better than words can and pausing to look at an image can really be powerful to somebody and yes reading a paragraph can really be powerful too but this is just another method of of putting forth powerful information in somebody's hands the second reason you should be doing that is that these books especially the ones geared towards younger younger children and in younger grades reach them and, and hit them in more powerful ways than prose does, right? Maybe they don't have the the capacity to understand like a, a high school or collegiate level prose book that would do the same sort of thing. But the images along with the pictures and the themes and moods and motifs in these books can really get to younger grade levels like never before. These books didn't exist in this way when I was in sixth grade, fifth grade, right? And which brings me to point number three is that the list of books and artists just keeps expanding. So the amount of issues covered and it's not just now there's like one book dealing with alcoholism or one book dealing with the loss of a parent. There's multiple and we put those together and we're creating this this collection, this canon of books that we can use to help students and adults deal with loss or sensitive issues that are happening in their life. So there you go. Those are the three reasons why you should be teaching the idea of sensitive subjects with comics and graphic novels in your classroom. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. And if you would like me to do just a, a, a list of all these titles. I mean, I have a stack of books right here that I pulled out that I could talk about, but in all honesty, like this video is already seven minutes long. And if I started just talking about all these books, that might be another video. So if you're interested, comment below. Let me know graphic novels or comics you've read that have dealt with sensitive subjects that I could also put read if I haven't read it and put into my list. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and click like for more videos from me. Uh, review videos every Friday at 5 p.m. and educational videos every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Have a great day. Thanks again.